Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good afternoon. Well, well, yeah, good evening. Good evening, good afternoon, whatever. How everybody doing, man? This is, uh, we back for another episode. And hey, I apologize for the delay. I mean, we're trying to work through some technical difficulties. But you know what? I ain't going to complain. We're going to get this thing going. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, I'm so happy again that we are we are back in the building. We're doing this thing again. Uh, I'm truly, I truly am, a, I truly am excited, um, and I don't say that lightly because um, uh, it, it, it speaks volumes to um, to just what I'm. I'm just happy that you know we're able to continue to have this conversation. I'm happy that we're able to continue to do things. Um, so uh, and, and just keep this dialogue going. So I'll just say again, my apologies for the delay. I know we had like a 10 minute delay. We was working, trying to work through some things, technical difficulties, uh, but we're going to keep this thing going. I'm excited about tonight, excited about like I usually am, but this conversation, uh, I know we had a special guest lined up. We're going to continue to work that, but uh, we want to carry this conversation on because I feel this conversation is extremely necessary. So again, jump in the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, uh, make sure you share this. Uh, share this to your group, share this, and uh, just just make sure you share this with people. Let them know that you're you're in the building. Let them know we're having this conversation. Let them know that we're go it's going down tonight. It is going down. So I'm just, again, happy uh, for this and um, sharing it a little bit, sharing it with some people. Um, so we're going to get this thing going. So again, thank you guys for tuning in for another week of the conversation. This week, I feel really excited. Uh, I'm excited because of um, my time. Uh, this will be my last, with tears in my eyes, uh, not so much, but this will be my last episode. I'll be going live from the great state of Kansas. Uh, I'll be moving around, getting ready to transition. Uh, I'm thankful that uh, I had a chance to finish school uh, and that's coming to a close. Uh, but not only that, though, I'm just thankful to be able to get back, see family and friends uh, and love on some people uh, because it's been it's, it's, it's been a journey. So the last few months since January, you know, I've been out here in Kansas, uh, been away from family. So I'm, I'm excited about getting ready to go back. But I've also had a chance to visit some people that I haven't seen in a while and, and, and talked to in a while or see in person. So reconnect with some friendships and some things like that. So that's been a blessing. Um, I also, I think I'm thankful for the uh, challenges, being challenged professionally, uh, uh, not only professionally, uh, from professional, but personally, and being challenged to grow. So with all that said and done, I want to get to uh, get to it tonight. Before I, before I start, I want to uh, send a shout out. I want to send a shout out to uh, my girl, Narissa Ocean. Narissa Ocean, uh, she has her own catering business called Stacy's Heavenly Host um, out in Junction City, Kansas. So if you're in the Kansas area, hey, I'm telling you, you want to you want to make sure that you you get out and, and you reach out to her because you know what I'm saying? Um, her, her stuff is good. So today she had like she had a uh, had an event today where she was cooking out and uh I, I will tell you, I had her food and I had the black and salmon. So I got me two plates, you know, got me two plates. So I got the black and salmon, got some black and salmon, got mac and cheese, got some some yellow rice. And then my other plate, I got got me some black and chicken and I got some garlic mashed potatoes and uh, got some black and chicken, garlic mashed potatoes and some uh, mixed vegetables. And I would tell her her stuff is off the chain, off the meat rack. So with all that being said, I want y'all to go check out. All right, if you want to go check out, she has her own Facebook page, uh, Stacy's uh, S T A C Y apostrophe S heavily host, uh, and you can reach her at 785-785-210-4696. I say again, seven eight five two one zero. Four six nine six, and if you want to send an email for, uh, you want to reach out to her for her to cater events or whatever. I'm telling you, first class food is amazing, and I know her. I've known her since whew, she was like, I think eight years old. And now she's up. She's doing her thing. So I'm proud to support her. Uh, but you can reach her at Stacy's uh, S T A C Y S host 
at gmail.com. I say again, Stacy's host at gmail.com. So reach that out. Uh, reach out to us. She catered for birthday parties, all of these events. Uh, reach out to us. So uh, I'm telling you, just feel free to reach out to her because her stuff is out to meet, right? I'm telling you, go check her page out. Check her page out. You'll see some of that stuff she posts. I was like, sweet baby Jesus. All right. So, well, I'm a, you know, we about to get this thing popping, man. And, and I'm thankful because we was able to work through some technical difficulties. And I got my man in the building. My man in the building. I'll tell you, we go way back. We go way back. I think 2004. 2004. Yeah, way back. Like, right. I'm, I remember meeting this guy as a young PFC. Both of us, we was young. Um, but a young, 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 both young man. I met him in the middle of America at uh, Fort Riley, Kansas. After I remember we redeployed and he came in as a new soldier coming from AIT. And at the time, him and his wife was in the same company. His wife was really in my platoon. He was in another platoon. Uh, so we got we connect. We go way back. And in and, and honor of Father's Day, I was like, man, I wanted to do something centered around talking about fathers because fathers, everybody know Father's Day next week. So go go out, get your gifts, spoil your dad, spoil the fathers out there. Go ahead, get ready. Same, hey, the same build up y'all do for uh, Mother's Day. We want that same love. We don't want no more socks. We don't want no more ties. We don't want all of that stuff. We want y'all to go in, go hard in the paint for us. But uh I met him back then, man, and I would tell you he's been somebody we've been connected since then, been connected since then. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him, and I was like, man, who else could I bring on to have this conversation? And I said, man, let me let me reach out to Lat. Let me reach out to Lat. So the disclaimer about Lat, right? Right? I'm going to give you a little disclaimer about him, right? Right? You know, I, I would tell you, we both love football. We're both passionate individuals. My man is Baltimore through and through. He from BMO. He BMO's finest. I'm from Alabama. I'm a Baltimore Ravens fan. Listen, I, I just fell in love with him when they drafted Ray Lewis back when they came in in 96. So I go way back then. But I would tell you, I love him because guess what? He's going to bring candor. He, we're going to have a good, open, and honest dialogue. So without further ado, I want to bring my man in, uh, Lassiter, Kevin Lassiter. Man, what's up, Lat? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, brother. How you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing good, man. Hey, thank you, thank you so much for for coming on, man. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it, it, it you know, and, and this is what we do. We have we've had sat down and had countless conversations before, countless conversations. And and what I appreciate about you is the fact that we've always maintained respect, and there's never been a change of respect, even though we may have different opinions, even though we may challenge each other in different ways that never been a change so hey shout out to you for that my brother so you know bro it, it's always a difference of opinion sometimes but yeah it's, it's important that one thing we miss in our society is discourse you know when you can talk and, and and disagree but not be angry at each other and i think that it's yeah. definitely special when you have a person that you can have those conversations with where you don't always agree but you definitely walk away from it number one having learned something and then number two, you still maintain that great uh, friendship and relationship that you have. And I, I appreciate you, bro. I love what you're doing with your program. It's an honor to, uh, to, to be a guest on your program. Man. I really appreciate you. Oh, man, appreciate that, man. I'm going to read some comments, man. My sister with her crazy self talking about no one cares when I was talking about how good that food was. Uh, and my classmate, hey, hey, Chantrilla, how you doing? You see I'm representing that 9-8 tonight, you know, going way back. 1998, we in the building, baby. So hey, I just wanted to I just wanted to uh just get at hey make sure you jump in the comments, let me know where you're tuning in from. If you got any comments, please feel free to share because it's all about having an open and honest conversation. So man, I want to get into it, man. Let's jump right into it. So the night episode, the episode is we want to talk about embracing the realities and challenges of being a husband and a father. So I say that because we we both share a lot of similarities. I'm, I'm gonna go down the pipe. I'm gonna go down the pipe where right? we both share a lot of similarities, right? And like, first of all, like it, it is funny. It's funny. So we both got married young. Yes. <laughs> uh, we both, um, you know, both military. Both got married young. Um, and with that being married young, there's some growing pains that come with that. There's some growing pains that come with that, but from what from when I first met you, uh, you know, when I said you and your wife first came came to Fort Riley, 
uh because your wife was actually one of my soldiers right yeah and then you know you just gravitated to me uh but you've always had a desire to be a husband and a father like you carried yourself like that and a lot of people don't really understand that like you know and i, I just want to ask you like what 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 where, where did that come from man so for for me i think i got to give credit to my dad for that uh my father always made being being a father being present being involved with your children um loving your wife and maintaining a household he just always made that look honorable and so for me it became that thing that i really just wanted to do because that's what a man looked like to me so that it, it i so I, I it was an environmental thing me seeing it take place in my home and it made me feel like if I'm not doing that, I'm not being a man like like my dad would have raised me to be. So and I know, man, like me and you like with that, my dad was there. I mean, listen, I, I'm a product of my environment, bro. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not. I don't mm -hmm. have no. Um, bro, I don't know what it's like not to have my daddy there. I don't know what it's right. like not to have that support there. I, I can't speak from that. I can only speak from what I had and not only my dad, but both of my grandfathers, all of my uncles, like all of them, they prioritize, even if they weren't married, they prioritize taking care of their kids. They prioritize family. So that's just what I saw growing up. And I'm not knocking anybody. I'm right. not knocking anybody. That's just what I saw. So it was just like you said, ingrained in me that that's what you're supposed to do. But man, one thing I noticed about you though, even with that, you still had a desire to learn so like that's so a lot of people you can have an environment but if you don't have the desire to learn and you feel like you know it all like that's what i've always respected about you like even like you know like you know especially like with a and i'm gonna get in talking about being a uh a, 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 a father later but i'm talking about just being a husband bro when you get married young it don't matter if you get married old when you get married young, bro, that's a lot of stuff you just don't know. You don't even know a lot about yourself. Nope. And and so for, for my wife and I, we have a very, very unique situation with our marriage. We Because of the military, you know, we meet people and you become close real fast. Uh, and so Wait. I met my wife, I say I met her. I saw my wife for the first time ever on my birthday, uh, which is in November. Hmm. We were married at the end of January of that following year. So in that very short period of time we met, we realized we really liked each other, we began to love each other, and we decided to spend the rest of our lives together. But we were both 21 years old. She was a college graduate. She just graduated college. Um, I just left home for the first time to join the military. And so in doing that, like you said, that was a lot about me I didn't know. And yeah. now I got to share my life with this woman I just met. So. Thankful, you know, uh, thanks to God, we were able to, to, to weather the storm of growing as individuals, growing together, and then strengthening what we built together, and now maintaining it and being happy. Um, and the thing that made me realize I had to learn was my dad didn't know everything. You know, my mom didn't know everything about marriage, but seeing what uh, what they did and kind of learning, okay, I, they did that, I think it worked out good or it didn't work out good. Just, it kept me open to realize, hey, I don't know it all, nobody knows it all. And if you want to make this thing work, you got to listen to somebody. Because if you do what you think is is right or you do what you think you want to do all the time, you might fall on your face. So man, I, I want to hit this up though, bro. And I want to kind of, because people that may not, people that may not know you, I want to like bring it in perspective. You known as Big Lat. <laughs> Like, you know, right. man, everybody, everybody seeing me, you sitting down right now, but bro, you were six four. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm 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 gonna put a six four, 240, 250 plus. You know what I'm saying? You're not a small dude, you weren't a small dude when I met you. So, like for you to be humble like that, in the sense of because a lot of times you can be cocky or whatever, but for you to be uh humble like that, uh what I love to see is you were still always willing to learn, it didn't matter if it was professional. You saw like you sought to grow as a professional and you were always drawn. If somebody was doing something that you saw that it worked for you, you'll go to it. But in your personal life as a husband, as a father, like, bro, like I've always seen you have that hunger. And like, how important is that for somebody who's trying to figure that out now? You know, what I'm saying trying to navigate this this four letter word called life and trying to figure out 
man, I'm trying to find myself, be a father, be a husband. How important is it to have that hunger to just to learn that willingness to learn? Well, I think life is is the the, the the combination of all your experiences and how you go through them, how you navigate what you come across. And so you learn real quickly that what you think is right may not be right. Uh, and I think it's important to have that open mind because if you, if you, I think I read it, I read it once somewhere, I think it was a, a Dr. Martin Luther King quote. He said, a man that sees the world at 50, the same way he saw it at 20, you know, raced, wasted 30 years of his life. Yes, so yeah. learning that quote as a very young man, let me know that you have to broaden your horizons. You have to be open to learn new things because if you don't, you only learn one way. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why I joined the military and left home because I wanted to see what would life be like if I went somewhere else and did something else. And then once you join the military, that opens you to a whole nother set of life circumstances and situations. You're living in different places. You're moving constantly. You're meeting new people. And Life becomes very fluid. So for me, it, it, I would I would tell somebody uh, younger than me, open yourself up to learn new things. Uh, open yourself up and, and be, be willing to learn. Because again, somebody that's been there before you and done it before you, they gonna know a lot more about it than you will. And then sometimes you can learn from other people's mistakes instead of making your own. Bro, listen, man, me, you know me, I love to cook, man. I'm creative, I love to cook. So like I'll uh, I'll see something I see something like I see a picture of something I'm online on Facebook some pop up I see something like you know what I like that so guess what I do I jump on Google I look at the recipe yeah they can give me my they can give me their recipe but I'm gonna take that recipe and I'm gonna make it my own and put my own flavor to it and why am I saying that I'm saying that because a lot of times bro like we we get to the point like we um first of all nobody likes being told exactly what to do let's just be let's just be honest bro I'm, I'm being honest like we, we try like and that's what i think a lot of times even as parents i fell as a parent because i felt like i had to tell them x y and z instead of giving them hey this is the recipe like if i i did i did a video uh, about how i do my mac and cheese hey this mm -hmm. is how i do it this is what i use but guess what? It gives you the, the, the blueprint or the framework in which you can go by and do your own. And and, and I think that I like what you just said, learning from other people and, and like, bro, hey, I, I see. I feel you. OK. Man, I do that. What are you talking about? I do that all the time. If I see something in the military. If I see something, if I see somebody doing something, hey, man, can you uh can you shoot me that in the email? Hey, bro, like what was your thoughts behind how you did that? And I, and I can take that and add my own flavor to it. Because, you know, I got to put my Alabama on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to put my Alabama on it. But I add my own flavor to it, and you can grow from it. And I think a lot of times, man, you hit something so, man, so powerful. Experience is the greatest. I mean, exposure is the greatest educator, bro. Like, and exposure is the greatest educator. Um, and that's what I love so much about being in the military for me. Is I'm exposed to learn, live and learn a lot of things. Like I've learned so much about Baltimore just by being around you. We ain't even have no black. We ain't sit down and be like, hey man, how was Baltimore this and the third? No, I learned that. Guess what? I knew, okay, all right, I know how, you know, <laughs> right. I, I certain mannerisms and all of that stuff. But I, I, okay, I was like, I learned that just from being exposed, being around you, that I wouldn't have got down there in Greensboro, Alabama. So I'm gonna get some comments and we're gonna go on. Got some major in the building. He said last, she said, you make me proud. Uh, and Julius Stroud said this, he said, he said, I feel you, bro. He said, I got married at 20. My wife and I are still married 27 years later. And I wanna hit, I wanna go back to that. I wanna have a, have a conversation on that one. Yeah, hello everyone. Miss, Miss Valeda Page Banks, thank you so much. I thank you for your continued support. She support me every week. So. Back to the comments of uh, Julius Stroud. He's someone he got married at 20. I got married at 21. You got married at 21. Uh, when I got married, my son's mother was 19. Mm. I was 21. Same instance. Uh, we were both at Fort Hood. We met. She came down on assignment to Korea. We were going to get married later, but you know how that is. So I was mm -hmm. like, so we end up getting married so I could go to Korea, all that we could be together. 
So that's how we end up getting married. Now we had some deployments and stuff like that. Ours didn't work out. Ours didn't work out. We end up getting divorced. And there ain't no, 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 no love loss or anything. It just didn't work out. But you and you and your wife, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all weathered the storm through those growth growth uh those growth periods. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't know is, bro, both of y'all have alpha men, alpha mindsets, bro. <laughs> I know both of y'all. Like, and I'm gonna say this about your wife, man. Like, I share this story all the time. And I'm gonna tell people so they can understand your wife. I'm gonna let you speak for yourself and speak for your wife. <laughs> Your wife was like, what, seven months pregnant? Seven months pregnant. Yep. Seven months pregnant. And we had a unit run. And she running in formation. And we like on mile three, going to three and a half. And she is so upset to the point of tears because she had she's falling back out of the formation. And I was like, Twanita. I said, really? That's what that's what we doing. I remember talking. I was like, that's what we're doing. She was like, but I can make it. I was like, do you see that big old ba that, that, that baby in your stomach? Mm -hmm. And I and bro, I was like, man, I was like, to me, like just seeing it and then knowing you, because me and you, I'm gonna tell you, me and you have a lot of similarities. We're misinterpreted a lot because of our passion, and and a lot of people interpret that passion as aggression. Mm -hmm. They be like, man, why are you mad? I'm like, bro, I'm not mad because if I was mad, you would know. It'd be different. Yeah. So, how did you navigate through that? You know what I'm saying? As a young man, and what's some lessons learned that you learned about yourself when loving and dealing with, you know what I'm saying? As both of you, you and your wife grew through that. So, we, we learned that, uh, yeah, we both have person, we both have personalities that, that, that make us natural leaders. Yeah. Um, and I think through through time and, and through growth, we learned who needs to lead in what situation. And we also in our later years uh, learned when to switch roles. You know, there's times where I know, like you talked about the passion versus aggression. Yeah. And that's been the story of my life since I was like you said, I've always been a big guy. So just imagine me at 12 years old looking like I'm 16. People that you're talking to a grown man. You know? Yeah. Time. So I learned that there's times where you can't be loud. There's times where you can't stand and talk. There's times where you have to um, hold back what you feel in order to be heard when you speak. Because if you go off again, you go off emotion, the logic sometimes doesn't follow it. So how, how that applied to my marriage or how that applies to my marriage is we, we both just exchange. We know when to tag in and out. I, I look at it as my wife is like my tag team partner. Um, and if you look at, I'm a, I'm a fan of wrestling. So you look at the successful tag teams, usually got one guy that's real big and strong. The other one is kind of fast, yeah. you know, and they quick and they shifty. And so we know when, when it's time for the other one to get in the ring and fight. You know? And that's one of those things you just learn through, through the years, through communication, through experiences. But it was very important for us later on to learn when, well, early on, I'm sorry, to learn when to encourage uh, when to push, mm -hmm. when to when to just listen, and it's just one of those things you learn through experience and honestly through prayer. Uh, praying that that God teach us how to talk to each other and uh, give us the skills to help each other heal from the damages that you that you may experience during your childhood. That was the biggest thing. She Bro. helped me overcome so much stuff from my youth because listen, of her presence. Like, listen, now you to just you to just tapped into something that I've been talking about for the last four months on this show, bro, about healing. And this is, and, and it's so, I'm glad you brought it up because I want, I want to get to this, man. I think a lot of times people miss out on their blessing because they begin to attack the very thing God sent to help you heal. That That's so true. That's because so think, true. So think about it. When you're wounded, you get so uber aggressive and you're trying to protect everything. But that person has what ha God has equipped that person to help you navigate through that trauma, navigate through that mm -hmm. pain. What clicked for you to allow allow her to be that person for you when you say so, you just the, 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 so I'll, I just to be completely transparent. My wife and I decided that we needed to go to some therapy and some counseling. Um, and, and, and I'm a big advocate on. Praying by your praying alone doesn't fix every problem. You pray and God told you to go get help. 
And that don't always mean opening the Bible is exactly what helps you. God placed people around you to help you. And so what we did was we realized we needed to go and see a professional. He happened to be our pastor at the time. So it was linked to our, our faith. But but I would just say this though, but he was certified to do what he did. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, he was a professional. Yeah, so I, I want I, I asked that question for a reason, right? It's because right. I'm a huge advocate for getting professional help. I'm yes. also a huge advocate for prayer. I'm also a huge advocate for meditation, a huge advocate for self-study. But when you're trying to navigate through some stuff, you need some people that are trained and certified to help you walk that dog on some things. And if it works out that it's your pastor and your pastor's certified to do that in counseling, then do it. But don't just be like, I'll oh, just pray about it and don't. No, bro, go get some help. Right. You know, and, and sometimes, and, and it, well, to, to move to, to answer the question, what we learned was that the picture of what a role of a mother or a father or a husband or a wife that we had was based off, again, what we saw growing up. But what we saw growing up wasn't perfect. And so we had to learn that we have, we're writing our own story. Mm. We don't have to be the continuation of our parents' stories. Um, a motto that I, I learned to live my life by is, yes, I am my father's son, but I don't have to commit my father's sins. And so that helped me to, to, to be open to learning, hey, yeah, he did it one way, and that created a baseline for me, but I get to add on to that by what I want to add to it. And so for us, we learn, again, we learn we don't have to be our parents. We can be like our parents, but we also can write our own story. And that's what led to, I think, led to the biggest level of freedom and happiness in our marriage. We learned that we could be who we want to be. We don't have to be who we thought our parents wanted us to be. Let Bro, you just hit something, bro. I said it before. I said it before on this show. I was talking about like there's some things that I learned. First of all, my my mother and my father, I commend them. Man, I had an exceptional childhood. I mean, I ain't had to work for want for nothing. I mean, I was loved, supported, all of that. But that's some things that I learned when I got older. I was like, that ain't gonna work for me. Right. <laughs> no knock, no knock on them. That ain't gonna work for me. And like you hit on something, and I wanna, I wanna. I want to really stay with that, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump into some uh, 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 some comments. But bro, you hit on something, like like you 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 hit on something, man. Like people feel like that. A lot of people feel like just because I grew up that way, they get so afraid to let that go, and that's not. But uh, and they feel as if, well, if I don't do it this way that I'm comfortable with, it's a knock on my mom or a knock on my dad. No, that ain't that just don't work for me. That don't work for me in right. my house and my spouse. Like, cause because a lot of things, how much and I don't know, I'm like, how much of it where well, you had to realize that you were angry and your wife may have been angry about what you felt like they should be doing instead of actually you, you see what I'm saying? Like the, the, the biggest thing, you know, again, it's it's communication. You know, if you don't talk to each other and learn each other and you have to have conversations about those controversial topics y'all got to come to some kind of agreement or understanding and you got to step outside yourself um because if you don't it's just not gonna work you know we we had to learn um and more importantly i had to learn that uh i am not my dad i don't have to do everything my dad and more importantly she had to learn i'm not her father either you know what she saw him do is not what i'm going to do what i saw my mom do is not what she's going to do. And so learning that again, we're writing our own story. Uh, and that that once you realize that expectation, expectation management becomes more of a reality and just a overall calm of life becomes a big thing. It's, it's difficult at first, but if you keep working through it, you'll you'll get to what you want to get to because it's worth it in the end. Man, Lat, you, bro, you, bro, you, you, you. Hey, you, you you batting a thousand tonight, bro. You batting <laughs> a thousand tonight, man. Like getting over a lot of things. A lot of, and I'm gonna say this: um, a lot of people don't realize that they're carrying trauma from the wounds of their parents that they end up projecting on their spouse. Yes. So that was that was a key, super key lesson. I learned that the times where I was getting upset about things, the things that really bothered me. It wasn't Kevin the man that was hurt. It was Kevin the kid that was still hurt about it. Bruh, 
Bro. And so you gotta realize I'm not little Kevin. I don't have to be upset about that no more. I can I can work through that. And and so yeah, learning learning how to take that childhood hurt off your back and stop carrying it. That is that is freedom, man. But it's not easy. It's not easy no, to get to that point. It, it's it's not, but it's necessary, bro. That's yes. what, like that's what I'm saying. It's not, but it's necessary. That's why I've been talking for months, man. And and I ain't really. It's just I know God has led me to have that conversation because it's uncomfortable to have those real conversations. It's uncomfortable to talk about man being scared as a father about how you're gonna provide and do all of these things and you trying to figure it out. Yeah, but you trying to keep like you calm, but in your mind you're like, bro, I don't have a clue how this gonna work. I don't know about this. Or oh, dang, man, am I failing as a father? Am I really there for my kids the way I need to be there for my kids? Am I putting too much effort and energy over to my work? How am I taking care of my spouse? Am I doing right by my spouse? Am I, it's all of these things that go on. Right. We don't have nobody that we can talk about. And that leads into this comment by uh, Justin about having and surrounding yourself by people that that that, that can help buoy you. He said, I think it, it uh, an important thing to keep in mind is also surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals, older and wiser ones, especially if you're young, ones that will help you fix your marriage based off experience rather than encouraging, uh, rather than encouraging it, uh, encouraging the street, <laughs> the streets. And, and, hey, I appreciate that because, you know, the Bible even talks about it. The Bible talks about old man, Teach the young man how to be husbands, old women. Teach the young women how to be wives, and we've gotten away from that because everybody, people don't want to be vulnerable because we we assume everybody has a bad interest. But in our actuality, I laugh right now, lad. My son Robert going into his senior year, right, and I can talk to Robert about certain things. And my approach now is I just talk about the the, the consequence because you, whatever choice you make, you have to deal with them consequences. Brother, right, been down that road before. I know exactly what's going to happen. You can take it or you can leave it. But if you choose not to take it and you got to eat that consequence, don't expect me to, to alleviate some of that pain off of it. But because right. of experience, I'm not discrediting your reality. I'm providing you a perspective from being down that road before. Mm -hmm. So, man, like, bro, like, man, you hitting it on the head, man. And I just want. So what are some of the fears that you've had being a father? You know, uh, fear that, number one, you may not raise your child the right way. Maybe your morals or your values may be too extreme for your child or maybe not maybe not enough to keep the child on the path you deem the straight and narrow. Um, there are times where I, I, I make I try to be mindful of what I do and who I have around my children because kids don't just take their experience from or their influences from you as a parent. They get it from anybody that they happen to be around. So one of my, I'm always kind of got my eye open for who I have around my child. And um, another one is just that I want to make sure I speak to my child in a way that relays the seriousness of the situation, but also tries to instill love at the same time. There's there's language that I try not, I, I really work hard not to speak to my children using certain types of language or, or things of that nature, just because again, everything that works for my parents raising me may not work for me raising my kids. So I like how you said that, man, because um, one of the things I realized that was a major issue for me, I had an issue with my dad not being the dad that I wanted him to be for me. So that impacted me deep, like down to my core. Mm -hmm. Well, I, in my mind, subconsciously, I was like, nah, that wasn't it. But yes, it was. That impacted a lot of way of why I was doing certain things the way I was doing. It. Translate to me being a father. One thing I learned from my dad, my dad taught me how to communicate. Because, you know, hey, to express how you feel, express your feeling, talk about it. My thing with my kids is I always make sure that what you say is I have a dialogue with them and I talk to them. And guess what? And I make a decision based off their parents by me knowing who they are, but also knowing what's gonna be best for them and things that I know that they will face in the world that they may not be thinking about now. And the same thing, like, uh, 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 I, same thing is, sometimes people ain't gonna agree with certain decisions that you make, but they are gonna end up seeing it. And that takes me back, and maybe we had this conversation before, 
I remember at Fort Riley, we were playing flag football. And, and uh, saw Major Barnett, who retired, uh, he was our quarterback. But, you know, they pulled him up to HAC and they put him right. up the team. So I ended up playing quarterback and I was playing linebacker. And a lot of people were mad because they was like, why he get to play quarterback and linebacker? And I remember we went to defense. <laughs> I remember this, man. We went to defense and, man, I got a pick six. I picked it out and ran it back to the house. And I remember hearing you, that's why he out there. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that man. I remember that man. Like that. That was a lot. That was like two thousand and five. Four, five. Yeah, he was like, "That's why he out there." So y'all need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm laughing because you know some people ain't gonna agree with the decision you make. Your kids ain't gonna agree with the decision you make at a moment, but you know you're doing it for you know uh, their best interest. Adam said this. He said it is uncomfortable to talk about failure or the, the idea. The, especially as man, how we've been taught, you got to be tough and all this and that. Bro, I mean, what you got to say about that, like how uncomfortable it is to talk about failure? I mean, it's uncomfortable to talk about it. It's even more uncomfortable to face failure or to have failed. Uh, but for me, the conversation is tough, but it's the, the, the real tough part is knowing you have failed and then knowing you now have to fix it. Mm. You can stay there and get stuck in your feelings and the, the situation, or you can now put in the work to fix it. But it's definitely uncomfortable to talk about. However, um, I, I'm a big student of history uh, and probably leads to my philosophy on learning, which is uh, a man that doesn't know his, his past is doomed to repeat it. And, and you can learn from your past mistakes or you can learn from the mistakes of others. But many people have failed on the road to accomplishing great things. And so, uh, it's, it's, it's both part of the scientific method and my learning method to have a conversation. What if this doesn't work? Have a backup plan. Uh, but, but also, you can also learn from observation and from that observation, conversation. And I yeah. say that because I remember you reached out to me, bro. You know, man, 2007, 2008, bro, that was rough for me, bro. Like, mm -hmm. rough. Went through a divorce, man. It was just, <laughs> it was rough. And I can remember, like, you reached out to me. was like, hey, bro. He was like, man, I don't know how you making through it, man. I see you, you know, I see all this in the third, and you still holding strong and all this. And that. I was like, bro, only if you knew, bro. I was like, I was barely making it and this. But because you were observing and you saw certain things, we were able to have a conversation. Now mm -hmm. we were able to see the full context because it was God that was keeping me. It wasn't me, bro. I, I wanted to give up. I wanted to throw in the towel. But, um in that in that through you observing me and then having a the conversation it was able to bring both together and get a better understanding and i think a lot of times as men we need to talk more bro like to men like we need to talk more not just sit down me have me a, a cigar and smoke and drink my problems away no we need to talk to other men because what we realize is bro it ain't we, it's we're not alone <laughs> there's a lot of us that feel the same right. way uh uh justin said that he said everyone feels pain everyone experiences trauma and one thing that i feel is forgotten or turned down is the fact that sometimes it takes pain to heal mm. Mm. He said, Powerful words. yeah you have to face and deal with that pain to heal that's what we were talking about earlier but the place at the end of the pain and is the face of the healing is so much more beautiful. Um, man, listen, bro, I, Justin, bro, you, hey, man, you hit the nail on the head on that one. And you know what I learned that with this on my journey? When you face your failures, the failures, that's why I've grown the most. And what you start to learn is, that's why I started beginning to understand the Bible more when it said, count it all joy when you face various trials and tribulations. You know, and that the testing of your face produces perseverance. Perseverance produces hope, uh, uh, character, and then character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. And I was like, dang, what you, how, how is that? How, what you mean to tell me I should celebrate when I'm facing hard times? But what I learned was the lessons that you learn in those hard times start to build up and then it gives you not callous but it helps 
condition you to the point to where you're able to face the next uh, failure or the next fear even a little bit better because you have a little bit built up into you and you know that the outcome it was better than the the outcome was better than the uh the initial impact yes yes you know and it's one of those i don't want to say the ends justify the means type things but i i look at it I, again i'm a big guy on history so confucius has a quote where i believe he says and i'm paraphrasing that uh it's not a loss if you learn the lesson uh no experience in life is a loss if you learn something from it i was having a conversation with my mom recently uh, and i thank god that she we, we have a great relationship um and in that conversation, I, I, I thought for a second, I said, I, 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 when I go back and look at everything I've been through and what I've learned, I wouldn't change the decision that I've made. And it's it's difficult to say that because, you know, we always think if I would have done this, you know, for example, if I would have went to college and stayed in college, maybe I would have made more money or, you know, had a different life situation or circumstances. But the lessons I learned from the decisions I've made to me are far more valuable than what I would have gotten if I chose a different path. So um, your failures in life should be fueling your success. Uh, my any, any setback that I ever had was a setup for a comeback. Setbacks mm. are setups for your comeback. Anytime I had, I made a mistake, um, I did something wrong, I lost something or failed at something, gave me fuel or education or experience to know that when I face this thing again, I know exactly what I need to do. Um, my failures as a husband, my, my failures as a father, and the feeling from it, facing it and talking about it, have now uh, fueled me to be a better husband and father. And so now when you face some of those same decision points, am I gonna do this, am I gonna do that? Well, I know the consequences of that, so I'm doing this. Uh, and, and it gives you the conviction to, to make good decisions because you know what's the outcome of it is going to be man I'm, I'm 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 gonna ask you a question last week we talked about the dangers of chasing the vanity of your ego and i want to ask you, <laughs> how much how much has your ego played into your failures as a husband and a father <laughs> i'm gonna say nine out of ten bad decisions i've made as a parent or as a husband have been ego driven. Uh, I read a book recently called Ego is the Enemy. And that's one of the truest statements I ever heard in my life. When you stop thinking about the when the we, I'm sorry, when the me outweighs the we in your life, you are probably about to make a bad decision. So uh, yeah, every, every, every I'm not even say nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 bad so decisions I made because I wanted this or I thought this would look better, sound better, feel better, whatever it was, scratch some itch that I had, um, or I just figured I'm big and bad enough to make the right decision on my own without consulting God, my spouse, or anybody else who's smarter than me, and it usually led me down a bad path. Man, I, I, I thought about that because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you with the 9 out of 10, but also I know ego is necessary, but it has to be balanced. And what, yes. I, and what you said, when the, when the me outweigh the we, that's when it becomes a problem. Uh, and, and I just wanted to ask that question because I know, bruh, like, especially as men, and, and I mean, ego affects both men and women equally. Mm -hmm. I don't act like it, 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 it's, uh, you know, it's not an a, a, a equitable thing. But for men, the issues that we have is just how much emphasis we put on ego and all the bravado and being macho and all this stuff. And like, bruh, like, Nobody care. Your daughter don't care about that when she wants you in there sitting down reading Princess and the Frog or, you know, she don't care about none of that. And guess what? That's necessary for you to do that. It's necessary. You ain't being no punk because you calling your wife and you letting your wife know where you at. That ain't being no punk. That's you letting people know where you at. Like, that ain't, like th those type of stuff, man, can lead to a lot of stuff as far as, as men, as fathers and husbands. Um, J Justin says something. I wanted to get to this. He said, after being molested as a kid, my biggest fear is my daughter going through the same thing, man. And we talked about uh, I had uh, about two months ago, two and a half months ago. I had uh, I had a show talking about. Uh, I have uh, four, four, uh, three guests, and they talked about their experience of dealing with either being raped or molested. And we talked about some numbers. 
So uh, I think one in every three female and one in every six male have experienced uh, molestation or, 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 or something in that, that realm. And I, and, I, and I brought that up because bro, that's, that's a real thing that a lot of people have dealt with and gone through. And one of the saddest things is a lot of them, a lot of people don't get the help needed to process that stuff. So they get involved with relationships and it's a problem and you don't know whether, you know, what a root, what, what is, what's not the cause of it, but a lot of people don't know how to navigate that. Mm -hmm. And and it impacts their ability to be a father. It impacts their ability to be a husband. Um, and that's why some of those things we need to, uh, to work through. Oh, Adam, Adam Sluter, uh, Hey, I want to give a shout out to Adam, man. Hey, I see what you're doing, man. I, uh, uh, we go back to Germany. Hey, man, keep doing what you're doing. He was featured in a mag uh, in an article about uh, uh, him and another veteran. Uh, they're growing crops outside of where they stay at, in an apartment complex. So they've been growing like, uh, uh, you know, like tomatoes, peppers, and all of that stuff. So now his crop has grown, and I saw he posted on his page. Um, the uh, a little small harvest that he had. So, hey, man, I want to give a shout out to you, man. Thank you for uh, I appreciate what you do. And I know how much that means to you. And I just want to tell you in front of everybody how proud I am of you, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. He said Einstein fell many times. He said uh, WD-40 got his name from all the failed attempts. <laughs> <laughs> that one mm -hmm. right time and learning that the failures are going uh, to be there. Uh he said, it's just like I, uh, Robert Shepard said, I guess it's, it would feel better to actually talk to someone about just normal stuff besides drinking, smoking, and partying, etc. It's hard to find the right ear to, list, to lean on when you're not used to leaning on an ear. You're right about that one, brother. Uh, but if you can find a way to make it happen, I think we can learn all together how to implement being a better man every time. That is Can true. We speak on that for a second. Just yeah, for yeah. A second. Oh yeah, I was about to, I was about to throw you that alley hoop. I was about to throw you that alley hoop. Go ahead on take it. So bro. that's an Adam. A Adam, that was a great point, man. Um, you know, I'm I'm blessed with a group of men that I have daily discussions with, and and part of it is the normal, you know, joking and, and joshing and we, you know, playing stuff. But we also talk about very very. We talk about raising pant raising children. We talk about investments in our finances. We talk about relationships. We talk about counseling and the power of, of healing. And we have those real conversations because we built a bond of trust amongst each other where I can tell my brother in a voice of love, hey, man, I don't think this relationship decision you just made is good for you. Hey, bro, I don't think this financial situation that you, you've been you're about to enter into is really in your best interest. And they can tell me the same. Hey, brother, I think what you said to this person hurt them in a way that you didn't think it hurt them. Uh, and it's very important. And to link what I just said and what Adam said with something you said area, uh, earlier, it is so important as men that we lose the ego of machismo and bravado and learn that it's okay to, to speak to fellow men with love, to tell a man, I love you, bro. Uh, I recently made a Facebook post. How many times have you had conversations recently with another man and ended it with, with telling that man you love? Yeah. That it's okay for us to do that. Yeah, man. So, like, like I, I was just thinking about, um, like, you, you when, when you're talking about the accountability partner, uh, people that you're accountable to, uh, people that can be candid with you and tell you your truth about you so you can get better and you ain't in your feelings. Bro, man, that is so necessary. And we, man, we miss that all the time. And the reason why we miss that is because of this, right? So there's been times where you reached out to me about things. Uh, I can remember an incident, you know, you, you're going through some stuff and it's hard to see things when you, when you are experiencing it because your five senses are involved. Like <laughs> <laughs> everything is involved with it. And you, you, you came to me and guess what? I've never told you what to do. Anything that right. you told me, I ain't never said, hey, man, you need to do this. I just said, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about you kinda, this? You kind of allowed me to work myself through the, through the situation. Uh, but to have that person to, to have the person I can have that dialogue with to help me find my way, that flashlight to help you through the dark 
it's invaluable. And if you, again, if ego is involved and you think you can fix it on your own, like most men do, you, 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 how can you, how can you find your way when you don't have the light to help you through the dark? You know, and I, I appreciate you for being that person, uh, you know, during, for me during my life. Well, I'll tell you, man, so you got to be careful not to hear through wounded ears. Mm. And I say that because ego, ego will have you with bruised and wounded ears, bro. Quick. Like, what you say? Real quick. Like, bro, I'm just t- like, you too loud, bro. No, nah, what you mean? Bro, you too loud. Like, <laughs> you too loud. That's that's not me. Uh, huh? No, no. Good. Okay, no, that's not me. That's not me knocking you or anything. I'm just telling you the truth, bro. This is it is what it is. And like candor, like man, I, it's a book called by Kim Scott uh, called Radical Candor. Black, you need to pick that one up, bro. Matter of fact, just give me okay. after this. We'll talk. Get your address. I will send it to you, bro. When I tell you, okay. it's a great book, great book. And she talked about the necessity of being candid. You don't have to be. I've never been a a hole, dude. I, that just ain't who I am. But I, I, I have been frank, <laughs> and and <at> some people, <laughs> but some people would like. But I'm not. I'm not doing it from a position of. First of all, it's never about. Me. I love people. You love people, and I can tell it. And I and, and because I know you love people, I know for a fact that you. Your motives and how you do things is not from a malice place. I know that. No. But people that don't know you, they see the six foot four, 250 pound, 245, 250 pound big black man, and they hear your, your voice and the strength in your voice. Now all of a sudden that changed the narrative. And I but I'm like, nah, man, if you know let let just a I call you a big teddy bear pit bull. That's what I'm gonna call you. You're a big teddy bear pit bull. You love people, but you know, if you gotta get down and get dirty, you know what I'm saying? Especially about gotta happen, gotta happen. I'm just saying, especially about your family, like bro, it, it is what it is. So uh, you know, that 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 dialogue, and you said something earlier, and you've been bringing something up, and I wanted to touch on what value do you put on reading, bro? <sighs> reading is is one of the most for me, it is probably my primary uh method of instruction. Uh, you know, some people learn visually, some people learn audibly. Reading is the way that I prefer to learn. And you, you got to feed your mind. You got to feed your mind. You have to expose yourself to other people's perspectives on things, uh, again, to other people's learned experiences from things. And so reading is, is as the as they used to say back in the 80s or in the 90s, reading is fundamental. Yeah, but I mean, but but man, what if I already know everything, man? I don't need to, you know what I'm saying? I don't need to hear that from nobody, man. Nobody knows everything. I got to There's a million out. books written on the same topic, and none of them all say the same thing. <laughs> and, and I'm being facetious, man. Facetious, man. Right. But I mean, it, I, I, I like the fact that everything you've been talking about, talking about stuff that you read, stuff that you, you sat down, you invested the time to pour into yourself to mm-hmm. make yourself better. Uh, man, it's a dangerous thing to feel as if you the you the one all be all, bro. I'm telling you, you are lining yourself up for failure, and I'm telling you that right now, you're lining yourself up for failure. And also, don't be that fool, and I'm calling you a fool. Don't be that fool to feel like you can't learn from somebody because they may be younger than you, or do you see what I'm saying, bro? Man, look, man, I'm telling you, if I see it and I can learn from it, I do it. I even was like that, even as an NCO. I knew there's some stuff, man, I didn't know. Even as an officer, right now, um, uh, major in United States Army. If I see an E1 that know how to do something, guess what I'm doing? A 18, 6, 17 year old kid. How do you do that? Right. How do you do that? I don't have an ego with that because I value knowing it than not knowing it. Uh, Miss Valeda Page Banks. She said. Uh, she said, I think both of you can be motivational speakers. <laughs> there are so many young men that really need to hear talking like this on a daily. God bless you both. You know, Miss Miss Page Bank, I would just say this. That's why I reached out to him because I knew that uh uh that perspective is one of, of of what I appreciate it's authentic. And that's one thing I appreciate about you, man. You have been the same since I met you in 2004. Like you never like switched it up. It ain't never been like, man, what's up with that? It ain't never been none of that. 
it ain't never been none of that. And I appreciate it about it because that that speaks to the foundation that your dad laid, but that also speaks to your willingness to grow as a man and as a person. So but I want to ask you this question because I want I'm gonna ask you and I'm gonna answer it. What's some of the things um that you felt like you conversations you and your dad should have had that you didn't have? Cause see, I can start mm -hmm. off, I can start off and I'll let you jump in. So my dad being a pastor, me and my dad, we didn't talk about sex, man. We didn't, we didn't talk. Cause in my mind, I'm like, bro, you been my dad was preaching since he was 16, man. I'm like, man, what you? I'm just saying in my mind, like, what you know, but not realize my dad was a man. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. like didn't have those conversations about sex or like didn't have certain conversations, especially when I got older and I got married about, you know, dad, you know, did you ever think about uh, cheating on mama? You know what I'm saying? Or like, what are some of those real things? You know, how do you navigate this? How do you navigate this feeling? Hey, dad, how do you do this? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, it's some conversation. We had a lot of conversation, but those are some that I wish I would have had. Now, my dad passed in 2000 and uh, um, my dad passed 2013. Next month would be uh, eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, there's no regrets in our relationships. I just look back on and I was like, you know what? I'm going to have those conversations with my kids. You know what I'm saying? Like so that they don't have. I want them to be able to talk to me about stuff they want to talk about or need to talk about. So any, any conversations that you or your dad didn't have that you wish you would have? So that definitely was one of them. Uh, me and my dad didn't talk about, you know, females and, and, and dating and not, not at the level, not with the depth that we should have. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's on me. That's on me. Um, another thing is me and my dad didn't talk about things like finances about you know interest and credit and uh you know that whole that whole scenario we didn't have those conversations uh we didn't talk about the dynamics of a husband and wife relationship at least not not as a i didn't have those conversations with him as a teenager we didn't have those conversations even when i was a a younger man in my 20s um and those are those are some of the biggest biggest things i think a lot of you know my dad and i have a good relationship but our relationship isn't very verbal. My dad yeah. and I can go a long time without speaking to each other and then um, have a very short touch point where we cover a lot of information and then we go, and I'm working on the, the, the lift between our talks, but we can we can, we can can cover a lot real fast. But yeah, they're, they're definitely, like you said, the, 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 the uh, women and dating and the intricacies of relationships. But I think a big one, that, that a big thing is uh, like I said, the finances and the, the financial literacy uh, conversation that definitely that wasn't something I had with my parents. I learned that through life experience and through outside influences. Uh, and I think that while that's good that I learned it, it would benefit a lot of other people to learn that earlier in life because we can start building. And I know this isn't a financial literacy conversation. But we can start building that knowledge base in our children when they're in there, when they first hit double digits of age. And if the earlier we start that, the, the better uh, generational uh, tradition we start of wealth building in our youth. So, like, bro, you just hit on something. So I'm not one of those people who are angry. Um, and I don't get it wrong. I'm, I'm going to say this the right way because I don't want people to take this the wrong way. I'm not upset about having to start at a position of being disadvantaged. Mm. And I think that's the best way for me to put it. What I do is I'm going to maximize where I'm at to build a bench so that the next generations is not in the position that I'm at. And they understand the game as if I learn about these things so that they're they know and they don't have to go. And that speaks to the, 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 the value, like the, the necessity of having those conversations about credit, about how credit works how you build your credit score, uh, what about uh, financial literacy, about the stock market, about investments, about all of those things to where by the time they start, I mean, we get them right, bruh, by the time they 30, 40, our age, they straight. 
and they have the resources and the capital to do things, to start businesses, to do all these things, to invest in all these other things instead of being angry and talking about what somebody else did that impacted stuff four, 400 years ago. And I'm not discrediting that and saying that is, but like we have the power base, but our power base is based in the knowledge that we pass down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And you know, and but not having those conversations, lengthen those gaps to close those gaps. Because if your dad or somebody else would have had a conversation if we were younger, bro, I look back, been in the army 21 years. If, if I had a conversation and knew certain things that somebody told me back when I was 21 and joined. I mean, I was 20 when I was joined. Now I'm 41. Bro, I'd have been in a completely different situation. But I'm not going to dwell and be mad about it. But guess what? My kids going to know. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest teachers for me in my career, experience-wise, was, and I think it was you. I'm pretty sure it was you because uh, you just drop nuggets on me all the time. You taught me about the thrift savings plan. TSP. Yep. Uh, and the, the importance of paying yourself first. Uh, you know, no matter what we got going on in life, you can take a couple of dollars and put it to the side for yourself. You blow money on dumb stuff all the time. Put a little bit, put a little bit to the side for yourself. And so uh, I want to say it was 2006 when I first opened my account. And I'm not going to air my business and say the amount of money that's in there. But the fact that I took that little nugget of advice and followed through with it. When you go back and I go back and look now 17 years later and see what's in it. It's like, wow. Just knowing that early enough to take action and do something with it, look at what uh, what opportunities is going to provide me later in life. And that made me think as a parent, how can I do the same thing for my kids? What can I give them at an early age that they can plant as a seed and then see it grow into something when they get older? You know, as a, as a, what they say from uh, mighty oak trees grow from an acorn. You know, yeah. what acorn can I give them that they can plant that turns into a tree? That, they can, that can provide for them later in life. But we got to change how we think. We got to start thinking generationally, yes. not right now. So like, I'm, I'm like, bro, like, honestly, I, like, my, my mindset, like, I think, and, and this is a whole nother subject, but I'm, I'm gonna use this as an analogy. In America, we think election cycles. We think four years increments. That's what we think. When you start talking about some of our adversaries, they think 20, 50, 100 years down the line. And they're willing to build the infrastructure to get to their end state. Mm -hmm. And we got to start thinking generationally. Like, okay, yeah, you may just be a thousandaire, but your kids and your grandkids can be in a position to be millionaires. millionaires all because you're you planted that seed so like that's a and, and bro that's a lot of things man like i i take so much uh pride into like man i see what you're doing man like now you you just got in uh sworn in as the uh inspector general on the team out there at fort Huachuca, man like i take pride in seeing what you're doing and i remember that i just remember one conversation that i had with you and I know it was a certain point where you was frustrated because you felt stagnated. And I just put it right there. You was frustrated because you felt stagnated. And you was looking at turning and looking at turning like your personal abilities of what you know you you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. But in this one, and I told you it's bigger than you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know I told you that? Yeah, and I remember about, that. And it's about the like you've it, bro, it's people that look up to you the same way that you talk about me. It you it's numerous of people that that um, credit you for them, for where they are in their career. That's what it's about. And it's about helping people. And as a man and as fathers, it's about us doing that for our families. You know what I'm saying? And um, you hit on something earlier uh, about, um, you hit on something earlier about between you and your wife, right? We got to be willing to admit when we wrong, bro. Yeah, it ain't easy, bro. That ain't that that thing ain't easy. I'm I'm just that, that, that hey that that thing is not easy. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, and I remember the um I, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I find it out. I, I'm I'm gonna make because I don't want to misquote it. Uh, I want to make sure that it is I'm I'm accurately uh 
Um, okay, here we go. Yeah, so I'm pulling it up right now. I just want to make sure I got it right because, you know, people come on and <laughs> right. And they'll crucify you. Uh, <laughs> so, and we, we go into, uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to go into this first Peter three, uh, uh, one first Peter three, the third chapter. Um, and it talks about, uh, first verse talking about why I submit, in the same way, submit yourself to your own husband. You know, I, I'm not going to go into that. That's a whole because people right. are offended on it. But I'm going down to verse seven. It said, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious life, gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayer. So when I say the weaker vessels, a lot of people hear, you know, they hear from through wounded ears. What I'm saying is we have to be protective over our wives and cover our wives because our wives typically are more uh, emotionally aligned than we are. And we have to be sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, that's what I get from that. You know what I'm saying? And, but that's not always easy to do, bro. No. And I know like that ain't something that you just gonna come to you just like that. And I and I want to talk, you know, I wanted to bring that up, man. What do you have to like and what is some of your experience on that? Did you experience that and, and going through that and try to navigate that to get to that point? Yeah, you know, you 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 naturally uh for most people, most men and women, uh it, it seems to be a traditional thing that the man leaves. Uh, and and so for us, yes, we we you know we follow uh, a lot of teachings out of the word. And, but however, we also learned again that you have to you have to trust your partner's strengths. You have to know what they bring to the table. And so when I know when I am aware of what her strengths are, when I'm aware of what her knowledge base is, it makes it far easier for me to understand when I need to take the vaccine. But see, and that, but see, that's when it says, uh, and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs. Yes, and as so that, and that, that's a key piece. Because key. what like, we have amassed belongs to us. And so we don't make, as individuals, big decisions without consulting the other. And it's not a, I'm, I'm the man and you don't do this before you come ask me. No, I respect you and you respect me enough that we're not going to go and make this decision that affects our kingdom without us discussing it as equal partners. Uh, yes, we understand that men are, are usually a little bit ego driven. Women are a little more emotionally driven. And, and, and so tend to be a little more logical sometimes than we are. But again, when you have that understanding, and you go into a relationship with an open mind, you are able to adapt that new philosophy. Like I said, you write in your own book. Some traditions aren't always the great things that we need to follow. And so, like it says, we are both heirs, meaning that we will inherit the fruit of the decisions that we make. We both will inherit that. And if we are not both making decisions that want to give us something fruitful from our decisions, then we're going to find ourselves without. Yeah, man. So... I, I I think about um, I'm just thinking about myself and to some of the things that uh, you know me and you we play football um, and you play DN right yeah that's right you play defense and end. I play outside linebacker right there's certain there's certain blitz screens that are called put like this there's certain keys that are called. So mm -hmm. you're typical, uh, if you're defending the option, I'm going old school. We defend right. the option. I'm with you. Right? Your job as the defensive end is to take the quarterback. Quarterback. My job as an outside linebacker is to take the pitch man. Your job is not to take the dive back 
as the defensive end. Right. Your job is to take the quarterback. So if you can make the play as taking the, the dive back, if you already took care of the responsibility of the quarterback, then do that. But if you're trying to, if you're taking a dive back and the quarterback run out, you've exposed other people because you didn't do your job. Exactly. And I say that because a lot of times uh, when we start talking about husbands and wives in, in that capacity, we aren't taught how to be teammates. We're conditioned to try to be coaches and critique the other person based off on their weaknesses mm -hmm. instead of learning their strengths and you working together to know, okay, look, I need you to run point right now. And then that's, that's, that's one of the things that you only learn that through experience. Yeah. Or what you've seen, you know, I, I remember reading somewhere a lot of times, in, especially in our community, we teach our kids how to be, we teach our kids to be stalled instead of learning how to be contributors. Um, we teach them to go out and get theirs. And again, that's an ego driven mindset, but learning, learning that your place is to be a contributor and that the decisions that you make affect the other people that are on your team. You know, I call my family team last week. That's what, that's what, yeah. that's what I call I, I, my family. And so, and I am constantly instilling the mindset of that. We are a team into my children. My wife and I, we understand that, but I need my children to get that same mindset because like you said, if I'm the defensive end and I don't, I don't uh, uh, handle my responsibility when it comes to defending the option, we just gave up a touchdown. Yeah. And I might make you look bad, even though it was my fault, because the running back that's dancing up down the field is doing so because I didn't hit the quarterback at the beginning because I wanted to chase something else. So one you're thing chasing, leads to another. You're chasing glory. Right. <laughs> you're chasing glory. Like, no, man, like, I'm telling you, I, I've always been this type, man. I played fullback. I remember coach coming to me my senior year was like, hey, you want to, you know, you you think, would you mind moving the uh, uh, running back, like be the feature running back? And I'm like, no, nah, I, I, you know why? I love I love the game within the game, bro. Yes. And what I mean by the game within the game, I love playing fullback. Man, we ran double tight wishbone. I'm talking about old school. Where line, like, hey, hey, you know we going to do it. You got to meet me in this hole, and I want to let that linebacker know it's going to be a long night tonight. You're going to see 44 coming all night long. But what I love is I love making the play to make, like, somebody get a touchdown. But when mm -hmm. I go back and look at film, I made the block to free them up. You see what I'm saying? Or I did these – I did my part. Right. I always focus on me doing my part. And when I watch film, I watch film like that today. I watch film to see – who is, uh, even in the pros, who are playing their position? Are you doing what your was the key thing that opened up the window for the star to score the school? Yeah, so like, and I say, man, I, I appreciate that, you know what I'm saying, your perspective, man, um, uh, tonight, man. Like, there's a lot of things as men, talking about embracing the realities. First of all, you got to have a desire to do it. And you've always had a desire to do it. And just like I said, I made a, 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 I went live, I think, yesterday. There's nothing in life that's hard if you want to do it. Think about it. Ain't nothing in life is hard if you want to do it. What becomes hard is when what you, um, when, when, <laughs> when things become hard in life is when you, what you want to receive from something outweighs what you're willing to give to it. Mm. Mm, that's so true. That's so true. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I think it was uh, Coach, um, oh, what's his name? Herm Edwards. And I know he didn't make this quote, but he said it. And he's the first person I heard say it. He said, uh, a dream without hard work is a wish. When you want something more, like you said, when you want something more than you're willing to give to get it, you're not being realistic with yourself and you're probably not going to get it. You're not going to win. So I agree 100% with what you just said. 100%. So what have you got? Uh, uh, I want to read this. Uh, a few comments. Uh, Justin said, uh, at a young age, I sought out wisdom and teachers from older wise men that I trust to help me grow. That the ace. And we, you did the same thing as a young soldier. Yep. I, I won your NCO, but you show sure can't. <laughs> Let me tell that story for a second. Why you talking okay. about? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, 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 like you saying, you were my wife's section sergeant. 
So we yeah. are different, you know, elements of the same big team. You know, yeah. kind of like she's on the offense and you heard you heard coach and I play yeah. defense. But I saw something, something about you drew me to you in the way that you talk to people, the way you help people. And you got to be willing, like, like and what Justin is saying, if you see those things that you trust in a person, you got to be brave enough and, and uh, willing enough to take the opportunity to sometimes reach across lines and establish those connections, reach across the aisle and establish, it's, it's, it's valuable. And, and this is turning to a relationship that, that extended far beyond what we do wearing a uniform. I know as a man, I could come to you and ask you for advice or you can be my sounding board, or you're going to call me if I do something that's 108 degrees from my character, you're going to call me. And so that that act of, I like what he said or how he said that, and following up on my feeling about it led to what we led to us being here today and having this conversation. It's, it's vital. Man, almost 20 years later, man. Like, I'm just looking at the time, but that was 17 years ago, bro. 17. <laughs> And man, like, you know, man, I, I'm just so proud of you, man. And, and you know, uh, how you navigate um, and how you operate um, and how you how you interact and love people. That speaks a volume about who you are. But you've always had a commitment to being a father. And I will tell you, one of the one of the my biggest dream growing up as a young man, as a little boy, was being a dad, man. Being a dad, I enjoy being a dad. I enjoy being a husband. Like. I enjoy providing for my, like, I enjoy that beyond measure. Like, you, like I can't even describe, like, it's who I am. That's what I do. And, um, yeah, we want to be appreciated. I ain't finna sit here and act like we don't want to be appreciated because, you know, let's, let's just be honest about it. But that ain't no, that's not an ego thing. It's just when you put forth a lot of energy and effort to do something right and you operate a spirit of excellence with it, it's just good to be appreciated. Um, Tara said this. He said, that's huge. Being a teammate is something I had to learn all over with my new partner who had her own idea of team. Uh, hey, listen, man. And that's the other thing I want to hit. And I know we're going to close it out. But, like, you have to find out, like, first of all, let you said something. N learn the strengths of your partner and play to those strengths instead of focusing on what their weaknesses are. Because if you really partnered up, your your wife's strengths complements your weaknesses. Your your strengths comp comp complements your wife's weakness. In those areas, guess what? I let you be free. Like, go ahead and do that. Hey, look, you take the lead on that. And when we start talking about it, I want to use the perspective of a commander and the first sergeant in the army. Mm -hmm. For those that know. Everybody outside the military be like commander or captain. They they are everything. Everybody that know the first sergeant run everything, bro. A good first sergeant is running. A, a good first sergeant is running the company. Absolutely. But the commander is the one held accountable. And when we start talking about it, that's the role of the husband and the wife. In the sense of, I say commander and first sergeant. You're both here. You're both equal. It's just one is got to give account for the overall. And that's where we start talking about husband leading. That that's all they're talking about. Not all oh, he's domineering and he that ain't bro. All of that is this. That's all dogmatic, old, wrong teaching from a place of insecurities from people who try to control other people and uh, and, and, and oppress other people. That's where that came from. But when you're looking at it from the totality and the, the true context of it is you are teammates, that you are there and you're doing things together. And if you have a teammate mentality, look, you can't expect the benefits of a football team when you got a golf mindset. Mm. That is so true. That's so true. I mean, you, you, again, you know, team is an acronym. Together, everyone achieves more. At the end of the day, knowing what my teammate is good at and, 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 and expecting them to do what they're good at and then me knowing I gotta back them up in this way, it just it just it it, it, it uncomplicates life. <laughs> it uncomplicates life, and it and you you achieve true synergy when you have that. When I know that, hey, look, if I if I if I blitz on this play, that Shep is gonna be there and he's gonna cover this zone because I because I just created a hole in the field. It <laughs> makes it so much easier. So take that same 
mindset and moving into being a father, being a husband, having a family, knowing that uh, my wife is going to be the yin to my yang and vice versa. The times where somebody needs to speak loudly on something, we know who's going to do it. Uh, knowing that she is the academic in our household. I'm laughing because, yeah, we know who's going to speak loud. <laughs> right. You know, knowing who's going to be the academic, knowing who's the person that maybe can say something away to, 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 to get the point across, and knowing when to switch roles, uh, yeah. recognizing growth in each other, and knowing that, hey, she may be the academic in this issue, but I might know a little more about it on this issue. So knowing when to pass the baton on it, and, and again, just the team mindset. And when it comes to a relationship, you know, sometimes you're the star player start scoring the touchdown on the field, and sometimes you're the coach that sent in the play. But either way, whichever role you play, we just scored and we're winning the game. And if you can understand that, that contributions matter, then you win. Uh, and, 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 and that's what it's all about. You know, uh, one of my favorite basketball players just got a shot to the Hall of Fame, Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace wasn't the guy to score 20 points a night. Ben Wallace get 20 rebounds a night, might get you five or six blocks. But when he when his teammates knew that, so they didn't pass the ball to Ben, expecting him to go out. You know, if we if we, if, if we're, our wins or losses are dependent on your weakness winning the game for us, it's not going to be a good outlook for us. You know, but knowing what a person is good at and saying, "Hey, we need you to do this because we got everything else." Man, That's how you win. Shout out to Ben Wallace from the great state of Alabama. You know what I'm saying? I had to throw that out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Lat, man, uh, just in closing, man, what advice would you give a young man who may be listening to this, uh, who may hear this in the future, and just trying to figure it out? Like, you know, man, I'm trying to do the right thing. You know, like, what, what some advice would you give him about embracing or facing the challenges of being a husband and a father? First thing I'm going to tell you is what I got on my shirt. It says, be you because everyone else is taking. Be yourself because everyone else is taking. That's the first piece. The second one is find someone you trust to help you make decisions. Whether that's God, your father, your uncle, a mentor, whoever, a brother, find someone to help you make decisions in logic, not in emotion. Mm. Mm. My, I, what I would add to that, don't be so easily offended by what somebody telling you to make yourself better. So because a lot of times, um, so man, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so Monday, man, I'm, I'm excited. Monday, I'm going to finish up the last two songs for my album. So, you know, uh, that'll be coming out soon. So, uh, looking to, uh, um, Looking to put that out there, but one of the songs that I'm uh, one of the songs I got on there called Eliminate Excuses, right? Mm -hmm. And and what I was talking about is some of the points I'm talking about in the song is sometimes you got to find a mentor because some things you won't know. Find them, talk to them because guess what? They're gonna help you overcome it, but you can't have wounded and baby ears. Because some stuff they're gonna tell you, hey bro, you jacked up. You need to change that. So you can't be so easily offended. As a man, bro, you gotta eat, you gotta learn how to eat some crow. What I mean by eat some crow is you know, you gotta learn how to just eat some humble pie. Humble yourself, apologize, own that thing, take ownership. That's about being a man. And hey, that taking ownership don't feel good, bro. Especially when you got the wallet in the mud you made. <laughs> and don't, but when you own your mistakes, nobody can ever use them against you. And those mistakes cannot come back to own you. They will never be able to come back to own you. And that's so, and man, that is lat, boy. You listen, listen, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, man, I'm so grateful and I'm glad. And this is why I knew all of the problems we had, the technical difficulties coming up. Because the enemy didn't want this information to get out. It didn't want to be a blessing to other people. And, and let people know, man, being a man is being who you are, being who God created you to be, but learning to grow and maximize your potential to benefit your, your spouse and your kids and make it better for them and your community. That's what really what it's about, bro. That's what it's about. I mean, any parting words you want to say? 
I just I appreciate uh, you sharing your platform with me. Ask uh, you know, allow me the opportunity to come on and speak. And most importantly, brother, I thank you for your friendship throughout the years. And I know we got a long way to go, but I appreciate your presence in my life uh, through my military career and my marriage because it's been invaluable. Thank you, brother. I uh, man, you know, uh, you're more than welcome, man. You know, I got a lot, a lot of love for you and your fam. Uh, for those that don't know, his daughter was born on my birthday. You know what I'm saying? So me and Sam and I, I saw saw you a few, you know, about month, about two months ago, right before you left Fort Riley, I was able to come down to see y'all before y'all left. And man, I was looking at Sam like, bro, we getting old, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, we getting old. And man, just Twanita, oh, uh, Twanita gonna be on the album. So I mean, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited uh, about this, man. And uh, Miss Paige Banks, she said, uh, well, my brother, my older brother, uh, Eric, he said, good show. Uh, Adam said, thank you uh, both for sharing today. He said his spouse would like to say thank you. Uh, and Miss Paige Banks, she said, I truly enjoyed the show. Continue to be the man that's needed, and our young man needs to see it here. Hey man, um, I, I, I was just tell you I'm grateful, uh, grateful for our friendship. Uh, you know, it's benefited me more than what you uh, what you probably think. Uh, I appreciate you, man, uh, a lot, man. Um, I appreciate you more than you know, and I try to make sure I communicate that. Uh, I like how you navigate, man. I like what you're doing, and I just say, man, let's just keep building the legacy, man. Because the legacy is gonna last a lot longer than we do, and not only not only uh, 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 one chase a thousand, two chase ten thousand. You kind of see what I'm saying? I so wish let's, you. Let, let, let's uh, continue to do our part, man. And hey, uh, we we'll invite everybody back for next week. It's gonna be another one. We're gonna celebrate fathers again. We're gonna have another conversations about fathers, I'm trying to pull some pull some people in and, and talk from a different perspective. Uh, I, I, I will be talking about, you know, blended families, you know what I'm saying? Dealing from that dynamic um, and, and talking about, uh, you know, that's what I want to talk about. Blended families and and, and those dynamics and and uh, and 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 also to I want to say this. I want to say this in my closing. It has we got to do a better job when it comes to. Our children. And I want to say that there's a lot of things that have transpired between parents. And you're holding that hurt and hurting your kids because you're trying to get back at the other parent. Mm. Um, just I'm going to say from personal standpoint, um, I've known that uh, there's a family member that I haven't seen since 1999. Because of that dynamic. And I say that's my nephew. And at the end of the day, no matter what transpired between the parents, nothing will ever change the fact that they are the parents. So whatever those issues are, if those issues are internal, if those issues are um, rooted into what went on between you and your uh, uh, your parent. You got to process that stuff, man. You got to face that stuff because guess what? That relationship with that parent, that ain't got, like, I went through that personally. Bro, I ain't never held nothing against my son's mother for what transpired between us. Never. And never will. Why? Because at the end of the day, she birthed my child, man. She carried my child for nine months. So despite what went down, I have to respect that. So at the end of the day, like, and I'm saying this, bro, because it just hurts my heart. It hurts my spirit to see, yeah, there's some parents that don't do nothing. There's some parents ain't paying child support, ain't trying to be there in their life. I'm speaking to those who parents are trying to be there and you being a hindrance because you ain't your feelings. That's a necessary conversation. I'm That's tuning in to watch it myself. Yeah, yeah. So so are we going, we going, well, let's say we go out and have that conversation. I ain't talking about this, that, and the third. Because a lot of times when we start talking about child support, you making it about you, not about the kid. Let's just have that. Let's have that conversation. Because if the parent is willing, because a lot of times some people don't have, 
And I get that. Some people ain't doing like that's different variables. But I'm talking about for those instances where the parent is able to do, but you trying to be a hindrance because you want it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Because guess what? You got to get an answer for that. You have to give an answer for that. That's on you. you. So I ain't trying to I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings or end on a bad note. I just want to speak to that because that's something that goes on so much. I remember this story that was shared with me, and I'm going to share this. There was an incident where this father was trying to see his daughter. The mama wouldn't let her do it. The father was, uh, 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 she wouldn't let him do it because she said that he he wasn't giving her no money or whatever. And the father, by court order, the father was going to try to get the child. And she never would give him to him. Did this for like six months. Father kept documentation and everything. When they went to court, the judge ended up giving him custody of the daughter. It shouldn't have to be that, though. That's no. all I'm saying. We got to start, like, we have wounded so, it's so many hurt kids out there that are turning to hurt adults, that turn into hurt husbands and hurt fathers because of the actions of their parents and their parents didn't deal with their pain. Stop passing this stuff on to your kids and deal with it. Because guess what? We are creating it. So that's a whole nother subject. I'm going to leave that be. I don't know where that came from, Lat, but I just felt led to say and that. It needed to be said. It, it, it needed to be said. It needed to be said because it needed to be said. So, man, I appreciate you so much, man. Thanks for coming on. And, man, I'm so glad you came on. Tell the family, I said, hey, uh, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of love for you. And like what you said, Lat, I love you, bro. Love you. I love you too, bro. Hey, you guys take it easy. Have a great night. God bless.